the foot race across America. Back in 1926, in the hills around Foyle, Oklahoma, the jackrabbits must have gotten used to the sound of Andy Payne running by. The Cherokee teenager was almost as fast as they were. Andy loved to run. After he finished the morning chores on his family's farm, he ran five miles to school. He often got there before his brothers and sisters, who arrived on horseback. I just had a knack for being able to cover the ground on foot, he later explained. In those days, Andy won prizes in many track tournaments, especially long distance events like the mile. His biggest race would be much longer than that though. Runners won it. After he graduated from high school in 1927, Andy, now age 20, went to Los Angeles, California to look for a job. Work turned out to be hard to find. One day he read an ad in a newspaper that would change his life. Runners won it, the ad said. An international, transcontinental foot race was going to take place in March. The race would start in Los Angeles and end across the country in New York City. That was a distance of over 3,400 miles. The winner would receive $25,000. The 1920s were already known for crazy contests. There were dance marathons, six-day bicycle races, even people setting records for sitting on flagpoles. A man named C.C. Pyle planned the foot race to follow the recently built Route 66, a road that stretched from Los Angeles to Chicago. Andy Payne was excited. He felt he had as good a chance to win as anyone. The prize money would help his parents pay for their farm. It might also help persuade his girlfriend, Vivian Shaddox, to marry him. The Starting Line Andy hurried back to Oklahoma. He talked his father and local officials into lending him the $125 he needed to enter the race. Then he returned to California to train. After three weeks of running and getting into shape there, he felt ready. On the morning of March 4, 1928, Andy lined up with nearly 200 other runners at the starting line. They came from across the United States as well as from other countries, including Finland, Switzerland, Canada, and Italy. They were as young as 16 and as old as 63. A few were already famous for competing in marathons and other long distance races. One was the son of a millionaire. Most, however, were poor. In 1928, an average factory worker earned $1,200 a year. Winning the prize money would be like receiving 20 years salary. Finally, the great football player Red Grange gave the signal, boom! All 199 men sprang forward, each one dreaming of victory in New York City. Over Mountains and Deserts The first day of the race was the easiest. All the runners made it to the town of Puente, California, 17 miles away, but it would soon get harder. The runners had to climb steep Cajon Pass and then deal with the intense heat of the Mojave Desert. By the 12th of March, one week into the race, more than 50 runners had dropped out tired by the steep climbs and blistered by the desert sun. A record was kept of the runner's time for each day. Surprising many of the more famous runners was number 43, Andy Payne. Andy was running in third place. As the runners left behind California for Arizona, they faced even tougher climbs. By March 21st, more than half of the original 199 had dropped out, including the man who had been in first place, the South African long distance champion, Arthur Newton. The runners had also discovered that C.C. Pyle, the race organizer, was not a man of his word. Instead of the big meals they enjoyed at the start of the race, they were now served poor stews. Often, Pyle's big caravan, nicknamed America, was late with the tents, cots, and blankets, which were never washed. Then the runners were forced to sleep in barns or stables. Andy Payne was having his own troubles. He had tonsillitis and a fever, but he kept up the pace. After the runners had made their way through the snow and mud of northern Texas, Andy entered his home state of Oklahoma in the lead. The Bunyan Derby By now, the foot race was attracting lots of attention. The newspapers had begun to call it the Bunyan Derby. But Andy was lucky. He didn't have bunions. Swelling of the big toes. In Oklahoma City, Andy told a cheering crowd and the governor of the state, Hope to see you in New York. When he ran through his hometown of Foyle, he took a few minutes to visit his girlfriend Vivian and his family, and he bought a new pair of running shoes. Andy was becoming friendly with some of the other runners. One, 
John Salo, had adopted a dog in Arizona named Blisters and ran with Blisters all the way to Missouri. Philip Granville, a Canadian, believed he could win the race by walking, then changed his mind and began to run. Andy's closest friend was also his closest rival, an Englishman named Peter Gavumsey. They traded the lead from Oklahoma to Ohio. That was where Peter, more than six hours ahead of Andy, had to drop out because of a toothache. With a thousand miles left to go, Andy Payne took over first place for good. The Finish Line By the third week of May, the runners were closing in on New York City. The daily distances were getting longer. One day, the men ran nearly 75 miles. C.C. Pyle, the race organizer, was broke. It wasn't certain that he would be able to pay the winners the prize money. But on May 26, 1928, the Bunioneers, as the 53 remaining runners were now called, came plodding into New York's Madison Square Garden. Even though they had been running for 84 days, they had to keep running, circling the arena for another 20 miles before the race was over. In the end, C.C. Pyle did come up with the money. It took 573 hours, 4 minutes, and 34 seconds, but Andy Payne achieved his dream. He won the $25,000 first prize. John Salo and Blisters won the $10,000 second prize. Philip Granville, the Canadian walker, won the third prize of $5,000. Andy took the train back to Oklahoma. True to his word, he paid what his family owed on their farm. In 1929, he married Vivian Shaddock. That year, there was a second transcontinental foot race, this one going in the opposite direction, from New York City to Los Angeles. Andy did not take part. The winner was Peter Gavunzi, his sore tooth all healed. Today, people still remember Andy Payne for his remarkable achievement. Every May, an Andy Payne Bunyan Run Marathon takes place in Oklahoma City. And if you happen to be traveling on Route 66 by Andy's hometown of Foyle, you'll see a life-size statue of Andy doing what he loved to do running.